Hi, in this video I want to go over um, using Cadence Virtuoso. Uh, I intend to follow along with uh, Eric Brindvan's book um, titled Digital VLSI Chip Design with Cadence and Synopsis. Um, Dr. Brindvan is at the University of Utah and has made this book that really just gives you what you need to get started. It's specific to an older version of Cadence and somewhat his uh, extensions. The, he's made some extensions to um, the Cadence environment. And so um, he has a conversion guide, and some of it makes sense and some of it doesn't. And you know, I really encourage you to get the book. The book has a lot more explanation than I'm going to go in here. Um, this is going to be a, a pretty quick crash course, or at least as quick as one can get with Virtuoso. To get started, um, I need to bring up a web browser. Um, I am currently in uh, OpenSUSE 42, which is a, a the, the platform that I've chosen to uh, install the, the Cadence software. And to get started here, what I need to do is just download a, uh, a simple file. Um, and I'll put it through a URL shortener. of course makes it very very hard to uh, <laughs> to um, remember. Um, it comes up, um, you're going to download this uh, u of u.sh file and um, it's a very small file. Um, now that I have it downloaded what I want to do is run it and if I take a look at it, it'll be my downloads directory because I just downloaded it with Firefox. And we see that it basically just goes through and patches my installation files. This is pretty specific to the virtual machine that I've created. Um, and so if you want to download the file, if you're not one of my students, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, but your mileage is, is certainly going to vary. So to get started, I'm just going to run it. And of course, I find I can't because it's a shell script but not downloaded with, with the executable bit. So I could either manually run it, for instance, we could do bash downloads u of u. Um, I'll put in my uh, my cadence password here, and we'll see that it downloads um, from the University of Utah's website, um, and it's going to uh, try to set up things. The reason this fails is because I've already run it on my account, and so this uh, CDS lib file is used by the Cadence tools to list what libraries are made available when you run it. And of course, I already have it in here. Um, if for some reason that patch fails, you can manually take these out of the video and uh, um, go ahead and put them in um, yourself. But what should have happened is it should have made this uh, U of U directory and it should have downloaded and, and put everything in place. Uh, everything we're going to do depends on on the availability of these. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and prepare to run Virtuoso and I, am, I really do need to do both of these commands. So we'll copy and paste that and now I can just type in Virtuoso. The first thing that comes up is the command window, the command interpreter window. and In the book it's abbreviated CIW. The other thing that comes up is the library manager window, and this is going to allow us to um, kind of create different uh, cells and different views of cells, which is kind of how uh, everything gets organized. Now that we've got Virtuoso, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a, uh, a, an adder. And so I'm going to go ahead and make a new library. Um, and we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Mind Video, but um, in the book he uses Tutorial. So now if I scroll down, I see that I have the video directory. And if I look over here at that CDS init file, or sorry, CDS lib file, um, I see I have a new entry here for video. Oops. Um, the next thing we're going to, oh. This is one of the things I do not care for, the user interface. I don't know if it's because we're using OpenSUSE or not, but <coughs> you have to pay attention to things 
down here in the status bar, it's actually showing three windows, and one of those windows is actually hidden um, behind the library window, which is really, really frustrating because if I continued without clicking on anything, it either would work or it wouldn't work. It just depends on which, which tool we're talking about. Um, I know from the book um, what we're supposed to do here is attach to a specific technology file and uh, we have a whole list of them um, but we're going to do the U of U TechLib AMI 06. The first thing I want to do uh, is follow along the chapter 3 example and um, this is going to be a slightly modified version of what's in the, the book. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cell view. So we'll file, new, cell view. Everything we do that is like that's an individual part is going to be contained in a cell view or a cell with multiple views. And so the first thing we're going to do is create the cell full adder. And the first view we're going to do is the logical schematic. So I'll make sure these are all set for schematic. And now I can drop in the components of the, f of the full adder. So we'll see in a moment that it has the two inputs in as well as the carry in. And it's going to have one output, which is the sum, and one output, which is the carry out. Um, I know that I need two NANs, two XORs, a NOR, and an inverter. And so what I'm going to do now is, and this is slightly different from the textbook example, but I'm going to add instances. And I want to make sure that I'm in the NCSU digital parts library. And so since I know I need two NANs, I will grab two NANs and two input NANs at that. So there's one and two. And I'll need um, a NOR. And, um, I need three NANs. Oops, missed one. Um, and then I need a NOR, and so I'll click on this, uh, go back up a level, and grab a NOR, also to input NOR. And I'm going to need an inverter, one of those, and I'm going to need um, an XOR, and we're going to need two of those. So now that I have the parts that I need, now it's just a matter of kind of uh, laying them out and organizing them. So I'm going to use my mouse and kind of scroll out a little bit so I can see more of my screen space. And I know that we're going to do, um, just from how we build gates, uh, we're going to have the first NAND um, go into another NAND. That's down just a little bit. Something kind of like that. So now what I want to do is uh, put in my inputs. And so I'll go here to create, and we're going to do pins. And one neat little trick we can do is I know that I want to have <coughs> A, B, and C in all as inputs. And so I can just drop those three. And while I'm at it, I might as well create my pins that are going to be my output. So C out and sum, and I'll change their type to be output, and they go on the output. Next, all we've got to do here is wire this up. So what I'm going to do is kind of rearrange things just a little bit, make things a little bit more tight. Um, I'll hit the W key for add a wire, and we're going to have this first guy go into that one. goes into there. So there's the logical wiring for our full adder. Oh, so the next thing I can do is click on this check and save. And I got some warnings. Where did the warnings go, you might ask? Well, they're down here. 
And what it's saying is it's found some places where I have floating nets or um, nets or p pins that aren't connected. And if I were to zoom in here, we can see that that's actually very true. So connect that to that. And we'll connect that to that. I still have a floating net right there. All right. We'll just delete it <laughs> uh, and connect it. Check and save. Now this time it says um, no errors. And if you notice, I keep clicking down in this command window because that's seemingly where all the results go. So, right, so there's my full adder. Everything's happy and good. Um, in most cases though, we don't really want to work with this low level detail and instead what we really want to do is have a logical view of our full adder, like a block. And so what I'll do is I want to create a new cell view from this cell view. And it's going to have, in this case, um, we're still in the video library, it's still going to be called a full adder, but it's going to be a schematic that's a symbol and it's going to pick the ports so on the left are the input on the right are the outputs and I'm going to hit OK and so sure enough there is my full adder if you don't like rectangles you can use these tools up here to um, annotate things um, and maybe you want to draw the little kind of um, ALU symbol and put the plus in it uh, that's up to you um, at this point we'll do a check and save and sure enough, there's no uh, no errors. Um, there's one other type of schematic that we can do, and that would be um, a transistor level uh, schematic. So I'm going to close out of both of these, and we're going to make a new. So to do that, we're going to do a file new um, cell view, and in this case, we're going to call this our NAN2. And in here now, what I want to do in when I create my instances is I don't want to use these digital logic gates. Instead, I want to use the analog parts. And here I can use the U of U. And we know from uh, basic circuit theory, I'm going to move this instance window kind of out of the way. We know from basic uh, circuit theory that if I want to do a NAND gate, I have the two PMOS in parallel and the two NMOS in serial. So I'm going to drop two PMOS in parallel, but offset kind of from each other so I can get their gates in cleanly, uh, the wires for their gates, and then two NMOS in series. And what we're going to do then is we're going to uh, create our input pins. And so we're going to have an A and a B as input. And I'm going to create my output pin, um, which the textbook here uses. Oops, nah, I did that wrong. Uh, create instance, no, shoot. <laughs> create pin um, Y, and to make sure we change this to be output. All right. Um, I also need to have uh, power and ground in this case. So whereas the digital parts, we didn't worry about it because they already had it kind of hidden in there. Um, in this case, I do need to worry about it because we're doing this ourselves. And so we're going to have VDD up here at the top. And we're going to have ground here at the bottom. Now I can just wire this whole thing up. So. there's our two input, one output NAND gate. Um, one of the recommendations they make is that the P-type um, P transistors should always be made um, a little bit bigger than the N-type transistors because of their reduced mobility. And so to do that, I can click on the part. And over here, I can change the length um, from, say, 600 
1200 and, and just fully double the size. Okay, so there we go. Um, if we were, if we had to do our check and save, and the check and save comes back, I click down here, and it says no errors. Fantastic. And so just like we did before, we would do our create cell view from cell view, and we're going to have a symbol created for this transistor part. circle back. Um, if I don't like the size of that circle, there's not a whole lot I can do about it because of the size of the grid spacing that we're on. Display. And I can change my grid spacing to be something quite a bit smaller. Okay, much smaller. And now I can draw this line straight into it. And make sure you put the uh, display setting back, otherwise um, the grid settings won't line up uh, for future. Okay. Having done all that, um, I've made a decent looking NAND gate. All right, we can argue about whether it's decent looking NAND gate or not. So check and save, no errors. And there are my two my two parts.